Jamakoshi Niigata. A mountainous area where the majority of the Japanese koi breeders are located. It is the beginning of June and it's very hot with high humidity. Exactly the conditions that the koi breeder need for the new offspring. It's an exciting moment for the Shintara koi farm, in addition to the normal activities. This will be a long day and night for the entire staff. This time of the year, it's time for the parent koi to spawn and the important period of breeding and growing up Nishigigoi takes place. In the course of this program, we follow the Shintara koi farm during the entire breeding process. In this episode, the Shintara koi farm will show us exactly how breeders in Japan breed koi, from the preparations for the nursery to the actual breeding program. We do not skip anything and we show everything from the beginning to the end. The footage that you will see in this program, in both part 1 and part 2, are very unique and exclusive. It is at most special that a koi breeder gives us access during this process. Nothing can go wrong on this day. All ponds have been cleaned with military precision and only fresh water ensures the perfect growing conditions. Every smallest deviation can ensure that the fragile eggs will not hatch. Fortunately, the Shintara Koi Farm is a very experienced koi farm led by Masaru Saito. Knowledge and experience has been transferred from generation to generation. Masaro-san will be assisted by the entire staff, including his two sons, Kensuke and Kosuke. Both will have to do everything themselves in the future and have an important role in this breeding process today. The Shintara koi farm is known for their very high quality Gosanke and Yumbo koi that sometimes grow up to 90 cm. But before a fish reaches that length, each fish is on the same journey and at the Chintara Koi Farm, this is the starting point. This is the breeding house. During cultivation, guests are usually not allowed, or only in very exceptional cases. Both males and females are placed in the ponds. When the female is ready to hatch, the male and female koi are placed together between the spawning ropes. With a little help from the staff, several couples will successfully contribute to the new generation of Nishigigoi tonight. It is around 10 o'clock in the evening, and the fish are in the mood. It will not be long before the first female fish release their eggs. Because the eggs have to be collected, everyone is alert to the first signals. You can only do it once. When the time is right, Masaro-san will start the whole process. Finally, the moment is there. The females are ready to release their first eggs. Kensuke and Kosuke catches the females Nishikigoi and let them settle in a separate tank before the process can actually start. It is very important that the Showa females settle down before the eggs are extracted. Kensuke-san therefore allows the Showa to swim in a separate tank for about one hour. Tonight the farm will spawn two sets of Showa, two sets of Sanke and one set of the Kohaku variety. Most with human intervention, but the Kohakus will spawn completely natural. Every year the Shintaro Koi farm gains more insight into the development of the different bloodlines with the aim of striving for perfection. For that reason, all data is kept carefully. The amount of eggs and, for example, the water temperatures. Thank you. 
The coil will be put to sleep briefly so they don't notice anything from the egg removal. Everything happens in an animal friendly way where the health of these koi are the most important thing. Parent animals are the foundation of any koi farm. So all parent animals deserve only the very best care. It is absolutely very important that the fish are very calm. The faster he or she will fall asleep, this will make removing the eggs or sperm much faster. It is finally going to start. The female Showa is first to act. The opening and belly are now cleaned with a saline solution to ensure that all germs are removed. After drying the fish, the koi is wrapped in a towel and the extraction can start. The eggs are gently massaged loose and collected in a sterile bowl. The Nishikigoi is completely under anesthesia and does not notice the entire process at all. Because the Nishikigoi sleeps, all her muscles are completely relaxed, so all the eggs can be removed. It is very important that all the eggs are collected. If you do not do this properly, it can cause future health problems for the koi. Once all eggs have been collected, the eggs are carefully packed and weighted. The female is immediately returned to recover from their extraction. Several hundred thousand eggs of this Nishikigoi are ready to be fertilized with the seed of the male koi. It is time for the next female. After this, the first male will donate his sperm and fertilize all the eggs.
what you can clearly see is that this female has a swollen vent, a sign that the koi is ready to start. This koi has considerably more eggs than the previous one. It differs per koi, and based on the weight of the eggs, an estimate will be made of the absolute numbers. Once outside, everything is ready to fill the first spawning ropes with the fertilized eggs. But before that, a man has to be added to the process. Back in the koi house, the staff noticed that the kohakus can continue without people's help. These eggs are fertilized in a natural way, and after that they will be collected. The sets of kohaku are put together. Because these kohakus can reproduce without the help of the breeder, the focus for now is on the male fish from which the sperm must be collected. It is now almost 2 o'clock in the morning, and the cultivation is now running at full speed. Like a well-oiled machine, the team works together to successfully complete the mission. The male koi is now well asleep. Collecting can finally start. An empty syringe is used and the contents are then placed in a large jar with liquid. It is very important to collect as much liquid from the mill as possible, so that the maximum number of eggs can be fertilized.
Once ready, the fish is given a shot of antibiotics and allowed to relax in one of the ponds. It is time for perhaps the most important part of this video. The eggs are mixed with the sperm. The koi are about to become parents to hundreds of thousands of their own offspring. Masaru-san divides the eggs and mixes them with the seed of one of the male fish. Masaru uses a sterile dividing tool, which ensures that the fertilized eggs can be distributed evenly over the spawning ropes. Thousands of koi are now at the beginning of their life journey. One that may end up in your own pond, or at one of the largest koi shows in the world. Maybe the future champion can be grown here, in one of those tanks. The eggs will attach to the hairs of the spawning ropes within minutes. They are clearly visible, and it will only take two days before the first eyes are visible. After three days, the eggs will hatch. Even the eggs that do not attach to the spawning ropes will accompany their brothers and sisters at the bottom of the tank. It is now well into the night, and the tiring and hard work has paid off. The last eggs are collected from one of the female fish. I'm very grateful to the Shintaro Koi Farm that their hospitality and support for the channel. These unique images provide an insight into their work by one of the most famous breeders from Japan. At the end of the video I've prepared two new videos for you that you must see. In part two of this program the eggs will hatch and the fish will be selected. Don't forget to subscribe, please like the video and let me know in the comments if you liked it.
part one, you have seen how the breeders do the artificial breeding and how they hatch the eggs from the female koi. So in this video I will show you part two how they select the koi after the first and the second culling. So of course a big thanks to the Shintara koi farm and especially to Kensuke, Kosuke and Masaru Saito for sending me the videos. So today I will show you the second culling of the Sanka variety and the first culling of the Showa variety.
It's time to reap the fruits of a successful growing season. It is the second week of October, and that means the start of the harvest season in Japan. Today, the two-year-old Gosanka variety are being harvested here at the Shintaro Koi Farm. Two days before the harvest, the drains were opened so that the water level could slowly drop. This is necessary to catch the koi easily and safely. Today, Masaru Saito sets the pace. The two sons, Kensuke and Kosuke, are eagerly awaiting instructions from their father. After spending four months in this nutrient rich environment, the koi are ready to be sold. Only the very best are left behind in Japan to go through the same cycle next year. The bigger, and better the koi, the higher the value. The colors are so intense that it looks like they were painted on by an artist. To be able to speak of a perfect growing season, you depend on Mother Nature. High humidity, high temperatures and rain are three important factors that play a role in the growing season. Where there was a shortage of rain last year, everything seems to be different this year. Masaru-san looks very satisfied with his offspring. Masaru carefully closed the transport tank, ready to watch the quality and growth back at the koi house. Tansho, Showa, Sanka and Kohaku. Four varieties that are separated from each other here at the koi house. Masaru Saito checks in which pond the fish can come to swim. Everything based on quality, size and potential. Tomorrow morning, the first local koi dealers will be on the doorstep of the Shintaro koi farm, hoping to be the first to select a new koi for their overseas customers. I'm amazed to see the high quality of the skin. The black, also called Sumi, has developed great on these koi.
An important feature to see if the koi has grown well is to measure them. At this age, the koi sometimes grow enormously. This wonderful sanka measures 55 cm. All the koi at the age of 2 will be between the 50 and 60 cm. It is time for Masaru Saito to transport the koi to the temporary ponds. Waiting here for a new growing season or a dealer that buys the koi for the new overseas owners. So before you are going to watch one of our other Koi videos on our channel, don't forget to subscribe, like and share this video. YouTube tells me that 50% of you guys are not subscribed. So hit that subscribe button to uh, receive more Koi videos about the harvest this season. Thank you so much to the Shintara Koi Farm and have a good weekend. It is mid-October and the harvesting of the koi is in full swing. Day in day out, for over a month, the breeders are busy catching their grown koi from the mud ponds. Today's agenda is the first sansai harvest of the Shintara koi farm. Throughout the year we have been able to take an exclusive look at the activities of the Shintara koi farm in Japan. 
The Shintara Koi Farm is located in one of the most beautiful places in the Yamakoshi Mountains in Niigata. These special mud ponds lie far in the mountains in this vast mountain area. Time to take a look at the results of this warm and successful summer. To catch the fish, the brothers Kensuke and Kosuke walk a large round through the pond with a big net. Sansai stand for three years old. The koi that come out of this mud pond are just over three years. At this age, it's already easy to see which koi have developed rapidly. Most of the fish have been caught, and only a few have managed to stay out of the hands of the two brothers. Time for Masaru Saito to take action. He catches the last few koi with a big net. What strikes me is the very high quality of koi in this mud pond. Every single koi is from very high quality. The last fish has been caught, and now Masaru-san can start with the fish in the net. It must be a great feeling to watch your own fish develop like this. Every koi in this pond is a chosen one. Only the best koi receive this preferential treatment. This pond mainly contains koi from the Go Sanke variety. Think of Kohaku, Sanke and Showa. Personally, I really enjoy images like this. I see a very proud and happy breeder who has achieved great result with his own bloodlines. Piece by piece, new swimming jewels come out of the mud pond. The results are incredible. Not only the Sanke and Showa variety, but also the Kohakus are of show quality.
Thank you so much for watching again and thank you to the Shintaro Koi Farm for sending me all these amazing videos. If you're not subscribed to the channel, please subscribe and please leave a comment and don't forget to share this video with all of your friends. I've selected some special videos for you, you can watch right now. We leave 2020 with a strange feeling. While everything turned out differently than predicted, we also realized that our hobby could continue despite all measures. Many people, including koi breeders, have worked very hard this year to ship the new koi fish worldwide. One of those breeders is the Shintaro Koi Farm. Well, breeders in Japan have to cope with the second snowstorm in a short time, breeders indoor are working hard on their new crop of tosai. When the snow has melted, they are released into the mud ponds in early spring. We will go back in time for a moment, to be precise, to the 17th of October 2020. We are guests at a sansai harvest of the Shintaro Koi Farm. We ride with Masaro and Kensuke Saito to a high mud pond in the Yamakoshi Mountains. The ride to the mud pond starts dry. This mud pond mainly contains of koi with the Sanka variety. For months these koi have been able to enjoy a large pond that is filled with fresh meltwater and neutral protein sources. During the warm summers the breeders feed their koi with a high quality koi food. Most breeders alternate the types of koi food so that the koi fish receive varied nutrients. The target? Get the koi as big as possible in the most healthiest way. It is time to slowly unfold the net and launch it into the mud pond. This mud pond has been deflated for about 90%. One or two days before the harvest, Masato's son ensures that all the water disappears into the valley. The tanks on the back of the specially prepared vehicles are filled with fresh water from the greenhouses, ready to receive the koi from the mud pond. This pond is surrounded by a number of other ponds that it makes it easy to empty one or more ponds in a day during the busy harvest season. Ko san literally takes the lead while Masaru Saitu watches is everything going well. If you run too fast or a koi escapes, you have to go through the entire process once again. One by one the koi are removed from the mud pond. The skin quality and build of these fish are absolutely stunning. While the fish calmly recover, the sons of Masaru-san ensure that the supply of koi can continue in a calm manner. As strange as it may sound, the rain creates a pleasant atmosphere during the harvest. One sanka surprises the other. I am amazed at the quality of the skin. The color splash of your screen. Absolutely great. My eyes fall on a great Tansho. The build of this koi is absolutely phenomenal. Well, the men downstairs get the last koi from the pond, Masaru prepares the transport to the koi house.
Once back at the koi house, it is time to take a good look at the koi. The breeder will decide which koi to sell and which koi to keep. The unsold koi will stay with the breeder for even longer time. This means that the breeder sees potential in these fish and therefore he keeps them with them for a longer time. Maybe a year or even maybe longer. I have specially selected the following videos for you to watch right now. The main harvest with the fish from almost a meter and one of our latest documentaries from Japan. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe if you haven't already and I see you at the next video. Arigato. While enjoying a warm October day, the Shintara Koi Farm is preparing for the harvest they've been looking forward to all year round. Only the best and largest koi of this breeder swim in this single mud pond. Most fish have found an owner who is anxiously waiting for the results of this growing season. Fifty-five koi are about to be caught from this mud pond. The size of this pond is so big that you can almost fill an Olympic swimming pool with it. Today's team consists of the Saito family and their staff. Under the leadership of Masaro-san, they start installing the net. It's very quiet this year during this special moment. Normally the best customers and friends of the family are invited to this day, the number one harvest of the Shintaro Koi Farm. Some of the koi in this mud pond are larger than I to see. Not surprisingly, you have to be quite strong if you want to lift the koi like Masaro-san does. What a great picture. What appeals to me personally is the development that a koi like this goes through from birth. The care these koi receive from the breeder is so good that the breeding of koi can be called top sport.
it is difficult for the stranger to our hobby to understand how important this fish is to the Japanese culture. In addition to the cultural aspect, it is important that people understand why koi are sometimes so valuable. Growing a koi to this size and quality can take years, sometimes up to 10 years. 10 years of the best care, only the best care of these animals. I regularly compare the koi hobby with the equestrian sport, where top animals bred from bloodlines represent a culture or actually a lifestyle. This amazing sanke is owned by a well-known YouTuber raw fishing from America. What a beautiful koi. The beginning has been done, and now it's up to the sons of Masaru Saito to collect the rest of the remaining koi from the mud pond. Under the watchful eye of father, Kensuke, Kosuke and the rest of the staff ensure for a smooth supply of koi. Nice to know is that both sons have a very good command of the English language. Recently Kensuke traveled to America to spend time with a good mutual friend, Brian from Fitzfish Ponds. It is time to return to the greenhouses. This gives the breeder time to take a good look at all the koi and inform the customers of their results.
while watching these amazing koi, I would like to ask you to subscribe to our channel. Click to the subscribe button and click on the bell notification so you don't miss any new video. YouTube tells me that 50% of you guys are not subscribed yet. The koi will stay here until spring or leave to their owner. An unknown destination, but with an important similarity, and that is that they are always taken care of to the maximum. <laughs> 